been talking about addition in all the groups. Um, I know pre-K2, you guys maybe not have done quite this addition, but I'd like you to see if you can use relationships to add these two numbers. So if I were to ask you what 39 plus 94 is, see if you can not do, ready, I know some of you are like this right now. You're like trying to, you're lining those up, you're seeing a little. So I'm okay if you line them up. Try not to do something memorized. Try to actually use what you know about 39, what you know about 94. See what you can do. You, you're, remember, mental math does not mean in your head. It means with your head. So you're welcome to, in fact, would you all just put a pencil in your hand? Just pretend to be writing. That'll make everyone feel more comfortable who wants to write. Everyone in the world will be looking like you're taking mental notes, you know, notes of, of your mental stuff. So thank you. Thanks for playing along. I'm going to be quiet now so you can do all right, we'll finish the center on. Did anybody, now if I was in a real classroom, I would have wanted to have circled around right now to see what you were doing so I would know what to model. I'm not in a real classroom right now, big audience, but, but I'm going to ask you a question that will help me get out, I think, what I want. Did anybody split those numbers by place value? Did anybody say, I'm just going to deal with that 30 right now and that 90 right now. I'm going to pull that 30 and 90 together. Did anybody do that? A, a few of you? So could I write that by like saying, I know that 39 is made up of 30 and 9. And I know that 94 is made up of 90 and 4. And so I can add that 30 and that, that's an equal sign. I can add that 30 and that 90 together to get 120. I can add that 9 and 4 together to get 13. And what is 120 and 13? 33. Is that 100 and? That's 100. Oh, I'm running out of room over here. Um, so pardon me while I just erase a little bit. I didn't plan that very well. What would you say that was? 133. Then I heard a conversation right here. Could you tell me what you did? Um, I made the 39 at 40 and the 94, 93, and then I added. Or nine, you made the 39 of 40. So to do that, you had to give it one. Yes. And then why did you make the 94 or 93? Because I took one from the... Did you do that? Yeah, did you grab one from the 94 to give it to the 39? And so you ended up with 40 and 93. And was that easier for you to add? Yeah, what is 40 and 93? Hey, check it out. It's 133. Very nice. Excellent strategy. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this for just a second. All right, so the next problem is, what is 30, so again, I want you to see if you can use relationships to solve this problem. What is 34 and 99? Ooh, can you use relationships, 34 and 99? Did anybody, did anybody, Channel Raquel? Yes. <laughs> yeah? Did anybody sort of do a little give and take? Did you give a little bit to the 99? What did that become? 100. 100. And then take a little, take that little bit from the 34. What did that become? 33. Hey, check it out. What is 133? That's like my favorite place to get ever in the world, right? Where the question is the answer. What is 133? Yay, I have to get so that's <laughs> Um, That's kind of weird. That's a little weird. That's a little weird. We have two completely different problems. I have the same answer. Random. Let's do another one. How about if I were to ask you 93 plus 59? Could you use some relationships again to see if you can um, add 93 plus 59? 93 plus 59. Again, everybody's pretending to write just so the rest of us are comfortable. Thank you. I appreciate that. 93 plus 59. 93 plus 59. Lots of smiles out there. Lots of big grins. What relationship might you use to do to add 93 plus 59? Volunteer? Yes, ma'am. 92 plus 60. 92 plus. Ah, so you sort of did that give and take thing again. If you give one to the 59, that becomes a 60. If you take it from the 93, that becomes a 92. How did you add 92 and 60? I'm curious. <coughs> So you know that 90 plus 60 is 150, and you still have that 2 hanging around. Excellent! Do you hear how I just superimpose just a little bit of meaning on that? Perfect. So 152. I love, by the way, how you started with the big numbers. I love how you started with the 90 and the 60. Love that. Because do you know that research has shown that if you don't tell kids how to solve problems, if you don't say, here is how you must act, this is the algorithm, do these steps, if you do not do that, 
They took a whole group of kids and they never told them how to do the algorithm. <laughs> they just gave them problems to solve. That many kids, that all kids, all kids will start with the big numbers first. They'll think about the 90 and the 60 before they ever think about the two. And if you think about it, that's kind of the way we operate. Think about if you are um, writing bills, you're, you're paying bills in your checkbook. As you're paying bills, do you look at the pennies to make sure you have enough money in your checking account? Because <laughs> that's successful, right? Or do you look at the big numbers? Do really we mess with the big numbers to at least be kind of close to the, to be pert near the right answer? You want to be, you know, make sure you have enough money in the checking account? All right, so here we go. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of stuff here. And so our next problem to solve is, what is 99 and 53? All right, let's see if you guys can sort of do what we just did. Okay. Oh, don't say it out loud, though. Let everybody think. Let everybody think. Right, you don't want to say it out loud too soon, because remember, I'm the one that's a little slow. So as soon as you say it out loud, my brain goes, oh, I didn't even get a chance to start thinking. Stop it. You know, I'm sort of glad I have a plenty of her. What did you get? Weird. Let's see, did you make that 99 into 100? And then add 52, and what is 152? Love it when that is my favorite place to get. 